when you first look at this problem, I can totally relate that it can seem a little intimidating. You have to find out the minimum number of moves such that the array becomes unique and you can pick any element. It feels like there will be some complex logic involved, but you will be surprised that some problems can simply be solved via sorting. So let's see how we can do that. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. As usual, first we will go over the problem statement and understand the sample test cases. After that, we will start off with a brute force approach and then we will optimize it followed by a dry run of the code so that you can actually visualize what is happening and that way everything will be clear. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an integer array and you can make certain moves. In a single move, you can pick any element that you want in the array and you can increment it by one. So when you are given such moves, you need to find out the minimum number of moves such that the array becomes unique. It means that every element should be different. For example, when I have this particular test case, I see the elements one, two and two. You can see that two is repeated. So you need to make an increment to one of these elements such that the array becomes unique. So either you can increment this two to become a three or you can increment this two to become a three. In any of the case, you needed one move. So one is the answer for the first test case. Similarly, if you have your second test case, you can see that the array is bigger right now and two is repeated and one is also repeated. So certainly you will need to make some increments and to get to an answer, what you can do is you can increment this two to four and this will be two moves because in a single move, you can only increment it by one and you can increment this one to five. That is four moves because once again, you can only increment one at one time. So the total number of moves required will be six. So for this particular test case, six will be your answer. If you now feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to take a shot at it. Otherwise, let's dive into the solution. Let us say you have the sample test case with you and you approach this problem. What is the most naive way or the brute force method by which you can find a solution? One thing that you can do is you can start to traverse this array from the beginning and add all of your items to a hash set because a hash set can quickly determine if a number is duplicated or not. You want that all of your elements should be unique. So Anytime you add an element to your set, then it should not be already present. So once you start to iterate through this array, you see three, okay, you can add it. Then you add a two, then you add a one. And then what do you see? You see a two again. This two already exists in your hash set. So going ahead, what you can do is you can increment this two by one. So this becomes a three now. And once again, you will try to insert it. 3 also exists, so you can increment it once again and it becomes a 4. You notice 4 does not exist in the hash set, so you add a 4 in here. Moving ahead, you see a 1 again. 1 already exists in your hash set, so once again you will try to increment. 2, 2 also exists, 3, 3 also exists, 4, 4 also exists and then you have a 5. So you can now add 5 to your hash set and then finally you can add a 7. You can see that this approach works over here, but there is a certain problem. And that happens when you try to increment your digits one at a time, and then you will keep on checking in your hash set. Think about a test case when you have a lot of ones. What will you do now? You will add one to your hash set. Now you will try to add this one and it will become a two. Now you will try to add this one. You will again go through one, two, and this will become a three. For the next one, you will go one, two, three, and then a four and it will keep on continuing up till n. So for every integer, you are making so many operations and that is exactly what we want to avoid, correct? So there should be an easier method by which you can solve this problem. In our previous method, we had the time complexity of order of n square and we want to do better. It feels that an order of n time complexity might not be possible because you are making all of those increments in just one iteration. So if that is not possible, what is the next best scenario? Something between order of n and order of n square. 
So this is where order of n log n complexity lies. And that means sorting. Also, whenever you see an integer array, just try to sort it or just do it on a rough paper. It can give you some idea that you might not even have explored. For example, in this problem, you may seem that, okay, you need so many moves to make it happen, but you want your array to be unique. So if I have this particular array and I sort it, my array starts to look something like this. And this will make things so much easier for me. How? So let us say I start off with the very first element. I see a one over here. That's fine. I don't want to do anything. What I do is I move on to my next element. As soon as you go on to the next element, you see that it is same as the previous element. But at the same time, your array is also sorted. You know that I will not have a number smaller than one to my left. And I also know that there could be only greater numbers to my right. So the best I can do is I can increment this number and incrementing it will certainly make it different than the number I had in my previous location. So what I will do is I will increment this number and I'm going to change it to two. So how much did I increment it by? I incremented it only by one. That means I did one operation for now, right? Move ahead now. I see two. And is this element same as the previous one? Yes. So once again, you need to increment it. I increment it by one because now it will be different than my previous element. And I did one more operation. Move ahead now. You see that this element is smaller than my previous element. My array is already sorted. It means that I need to do something about it. So will you increment it one by one? No, that is where the sorted array helps you. You know that the elements to the left, all of them are smaller. So you need to look at only this particular element and increment it by one. Once you increment, this would become a four. So how many increments do you need over here? You need two increments. So basically this element will now become a four. And I did two operations for this. So I'm going to update my operations to, I think you get the idea now. For my next case, I arrive at three. Now look, this three is smaller than my previous number. It means that it is out of place. So certainly it needs to be incremented. But do you increment it one step at a time? No, you just look at your previous number. It is four. So you increment it by one. So this number needs to change to five. That means how many operations? Once again, you would need two operations. The three becomes a five and you did two operations. So the number of operations increment by two and it becomes a six. When you move ahead, you encounter the next element and that is seven. If you notice, this seven is already greater than the previous element. So I know for a fact that this has not been repeated at the back. That is the advantage we are getting with sorting. So I'm sure that this does not need any other operation and I am good over here. At this point of time, my array has ended and I have found out the total number of operations that were required to make this entire array unique. Based upon this solution, now let us quickly do a dry run of the code. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have the sample array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function min increment for unique. From our solution that we discussed, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we sort our array and we also initialize a variable that is going to calculate the total number of moves or operations that I need. So my array changes to something like this. And currently I have zero moves available. What do you do next? You now want to iterate through every element of the array. So I will have a pointer that starts at the first index of my array. Because for the zeroth index, you pretty much cannot do anything, right? You don't have any element to compare with. And this pointer, it will move all the way up to the very end. So we start from one and move all the way up to end. And in every iteration, what do we do? We check if this current element is less than or equal to the previous element in any of those scenarios. For example, if both of them are equal, you need to increment this particular number just by one that is the previous value. And in a case when this value is smaller, let us say this value of two and this was three. 
then how much do you have to increment? Whatever the previous value is, plus one, you have to increment it by that much number. So basically, the number of moves will be whatever the previous number was and whatever the current number is, the difference of those plus one. So that will keep on updating the total number of moves that I need. So this is how this loop will continue to move on and you are going to update your value of moves. At the very end, the value of moves will be six and you are going to return this as the final answer. If you notice, the time complexity of this particular solution will be order of n log n because that is the time that you take to sort your array and that will be with the quick sort algorithm. And the space complexity of this solution will be order of one because you are not taking up any extra space and everything is happening in a constant space. I hope the problem is now simplified enough for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that I know whenever you want to sort an array, the first thought in the mind is that, hey, the minimum time complexity will be order of n log n. So will I lose out on an efficient approach? Yes, it may be true sometimes, but never neglect the fact. Anytime you see an integer array, try to sort it out because once you have sorted it, one solution may become very, very obvious. And who knows, this is the most efficient approach available for this particular problem. This was a perfect example. So just go through the video and tell me what problems did you have? Can you find of an even efficient way by which you can avoid sorting? Tell me everything in the comment section below. I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.